Hey, this is Matthew, and welcome back to Nerd News Today. And this time around, we've got another gallery diorama statue from Diamond Select, and it's another one from the Predator series. We previously looked at the statue from the first Predator film, and now we've got the follow-up. Here, folks, we're looking at the Predator 2 City Hunter PVC diorama. And if it's anything as good as the first one, then, man, this one's going to surely blow us away. Is that a Predator pun? It might be. I don't know. So real quick, before we take him out of the box, let's just talk about this packaging here. We've got this kind of blue color next to some black and the red logo there. So it's pretty reminiscent to actually have the film, I feel like. It almost looks like he's doing his infrared vision, checking out the scene of the city. I also like just how big and bold the logo is, too. I think it's just such a cool-looking logo. On each side of the box, we have an enormous window inside of it, so you can take a peek in there. And, of course, we have the traditional diamond sunroof. So let's take a quick look at the back of the box as well, which has a very lengthy bio. That's a really, really pretty lengthy bio there all about the movie. And it also includes a photo of what the statue is going to look like out of the box. I got to tell you guys, this is probably one of the better bios that Diamond has done because it's actually uh, pretty informative. It's a really good synopsis of Predator 2, or at least kind of the good tease in the first act to get you involved in it. So that's pretty cool. I do like that. That's a really good, good synopsis there of the film. And it, of course, lets us know that it is based on Predator 2, and that's a PVC statue. And this was designed by Caesar and hand-sculpted by Eli Livingston. Because a lot of the sculpts are actually done digitally these days. But this piece is actually done by hand, and that's interesting. I don't think we looked at too many hand-sculpted pieces in the diamond line. I think this might actually only be the second time we've ever seen that. So this should be pretty exciting to take a look at what difference that makes, if any at all. But that's enough about the box. Let's go ahead and unleash our Predator 2 statue and take a better look at him from all angles. And we're back, and here's our City Hunter Predator out of the packaging. And I gotta tell you guys, I'm kind of blown away by this one, too. Like, if you guys remember the first view we did of that other Predator statue, I really, really love that piece a lot. I thought it was one of the best ones they've done. This one's getting pretty close to topping it off the bat. So where do we begin here? Well, let's just talk about, I guess, this pose, number one, because this statue is all about that pose. And it's really nice. This is the Predator basically posed after victory. Uh, I haven't seen Predator 2 in a long time, but I remember this scene. It's basically him fairly early on in the movie. He's got his first major kill, and he's all like, Woo, I got me a spine. And that's what he's doing here. <laughs> he's holding up that spine that's just been pulled out of that dude's body. And there's a lot of really great dynamism in this pose here, a lot of great energy in this piece. A very good anatomy, a good understanding of anatomy in particular, because, you know, really all the weight of the character is on this leg here. He's balancing himself with this leg. The arm is raised in victory, and it's not just like a static pose where it's just like arm straight up in the air. That's kind of boring. This is actually him raising it up there, and it feels like he's actually raising it up there. And that's because of how the shoulder is moving, how the waist is moving up and going up there with him. Uh, and more so, it's augmented by the pose of the piece here, too, because he's standing on this falcon here, this Maltese falcon, if you will. It's at the perfect angle to really accentuate this movement. So he is just really in high energy mode. He's super ecstatic and happy about what he's just done here. And all of that really comes through visually. All the cues are there and perfect and really lets you know what this piece is all about. And when you've got a statue like this, the body language is super important because as you can see here, well, you ain't got no face to look at. There's no facial expression there to cue you in on what we're supposed to be expecting with this piece. It's got to all be told through the body. And that's what's being done here very successfully. The body language for this piece is a 10 out of 10. And that might surprise you because this may be in some ways a funky looking pose if you kind of look at it from a quick glance. But once you actually get it out of the package and really take the time to think about what he's doing, it all comes through very, very well. So that right there is really great. As for the sculpting here, we mentioned that this was a hand sculpted piece. And, you know, it's really not much of a difference between what a hand sculpted piece and a digital piece can look like these days. But I do like all the cool texture we're getting here in the helmet, especially in his gauntlets, the skull. His leg armor is cool. And of course, we got the classic Predator fishnets. I especially like looking at him from the back, though, because there's a lot of cool things going on in the back here, especially with the shoulder armor here, the rest of his body armor. Uh, we also have, you can see there, two pieces that actually are kind of separate little floppy things going on here. We have a little butt pouch, and we've got a little burst, maybe? I don't know what we want to call this, but a little bag there dangling off him. You know, the first Predator piece only had one of those. We had a necklace of bones. This time around, we have basically a fanny pack and a merce, I guess. But they're really cool looking. His little, I can't remember what the name of that thing is, his chakram, I guess that is. So the blade that he throws that's in this position over here. The shin guards look really nice also. His hair is looking good. I really enjoy also that you can kind of see a little bit of his actual head peeking out underneath it. I don't think we saw that with the first statue. And we're seeing that here, and that's really nice. And as always, you got to watch out for this particular hand here with the blade sticking out. Those blades are, yeah, they're pretty sharp. They're also, as you can see from me just poking them, 
little fragile. So be careful with those. That was my concern when I got this guy out of the box, in fact, was this hand in particular, because it's got the blades and it has the spear, which luckily the spear, uh, it's a little bit stronger than I expected, which is good, but these will definitely be the danger points to watch out for if it ever falls, because pretty much those are gonna be the two things that would break, the points of these spears or these things. So just be careful with that. But there's a lot of good detail and I like the way this piece is sculpted also. You know, it does feel a little bit different, the fact that it is hand sculpted. Visually, it might not be that different necessarily, but there's other things in here that I kind of like, and that's really where the texture comes into play. And the texture just feels like it's done by hand. I don't really know how to put it. It's just something you'll kind of see better when you get it in front of yourself as well. Maybe it's the fact that it's a little bit more rustic feeling, and that's also helped by the paint job here because this Predator has a really interesting paint job. They've got this kind of bronze armor as opposed to what we had last time, which was more silver. This time it's more bronze and kind of crimson, almost like dried blood, which is really cool. And this Predator's skin color is also a bit different too. He's a little bit more peachy. And again, when I saw this in package, I thought he looked like a little too salmon-y. I thought it was gonna be too pink. Now that I've removed him from the box though, color is really, really spot on. That's really perfect coloring. The one thing to watch out for, of course, is gonna be the fishnets. They're always gonna be painted unevenly because they have to be hand painted and they're a pain in the butt, let me tell you guys. Painting anything that small, and I can tell you from little minifigure Warhammer 40K painting is a serious pain in the butt. And they have to do so much of it here, especially. Yeah, I would hate to be the guy who had to do that. But all things considered, for what the price point of this statue is too, I think it's done very, very well. Same thing too with that severed spine and skull. It has a really nice paint job to it. This is such a cool little bonus piece in there. And I'm just noticing now there's like really great detail on his fingers too, really good painting. I think this might be a better paint job than that other Predator statue. Wow, I can't believe that because that was pretty clean looking for the most part too. I like that one as well. And to be fair, I didn't think I was actually gonna like this one that much. As I mentioned, I thought the color was gonna be wrong, but seeing him here now, I mean, he's really looking pretty great. Now this being Predator 2, he's in the big city. We've got this sort of art deco falcon poking out from a rooftop. I really love the look of this piece here. I love when they do metallic pieces in general. And this one here looks really aged. It looks like it's been around. And the paint application, it looks really realistic, honestly. It's got that good dull shine, if that makes sense. You know, it's basically a piece of metal that's been sitting around for, for like 60, 70, 80 years, if not more, just hanging out in a rooftop. And it looks like it's weathered but it still has that kind of metallic look to it. So that's really great looking. Really with the Predator piece, it's all about the little details and they're all done very well here. Whether it be the paint job and the sculpting on his gauntlets or on his leg armor, on his loincloth over here, the blades, the spear, the mask. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in this piece and they all work together very well. And I'm looking at his feet now too and just getting a closer look at some of the body. And man, there's just all these nice folds in his skin too, all these great creases that make him look a lot less human and much more like an alien. That's really awesome looking. And I can actually, again, speaking about how we saw some stuff peeking out from his head before, I've gotten even more of a look at it from this angle here. You can actually see even more of his skin popping out underneath there, which makes me wonder if they're gonna make a variant of this piece also unmasked, because that's what they did with the first Predator piece. They had an unmasked variant. We didn't have that one, we just had the masked one. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe New York Comic Con or whatever the virtual version there is of it this year is gonna have an unmasked Predator from this particular statue here. And I would be definitely looking forward to getting that one. So as far as the statue goes, and also for a statue with, I think it's a $50 price point, you can't beat this one. There is really excellent detail, an amazing pose, really knockout pose here, I gotta tell you guys. I love the spear, really enjoying that. There's a lot of just good little tiny details that have been meticulously added to this piece that make it very strong. So if you missed out on the first part of their statue, which you actually can still get, it's not too late to get that one as well. So the question is now with Diamond having done a Predator statue a few months back previously from the first movie, is this version from the sequel worth picking up? And for my money, it depends on how much of a Predator collector you are. Uh, I'm very happy, honestly, having both of these. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get rid of either of them anytime soon. I like the Predator and I like Predator merchandise. And I really couldn't tell you which one is better than the other because they're both kind of doing different things, oddly enough. One Predator is stalking, this one here is victorious. It's kind of like some interesting storytelling. They're also both facing different directions, which is kind of cool. They're basically bookends of each other. So in my mind, really, if you get one Predator, you gotta get both. So at the end of the day, this is an excellent Predator piece. I'm raving about it, as you can tell, because I really, really like this one. Really happy I've got it. And just to throw back one more time to our other Predator statue review, we had a comment on it from a certain viewer asking whether or not he should buy the statue versus the action figure. And at the time I was kind of like, you know, either or, which one do you prefer better? What do you like better? What are the different points you prefer? In this case, if I was gonna choose the City Hunter style Predator NECA action figure, because that's really the only one out there. There's NECA, and I think the Haya Toys has a smaller three and three quarter inch one. Uh, so let's just say if we're gonna talk NECA seven inch figure versus this diamond PVC statue over here, which one would I prefer? 
I'm actually gonna say the statue. And I really, really love what NECA's doing with the Predators. I think that's like one of my favorite things that they do. But this statue is just a bar above all of that. I mean, this one here is just a glorious piece from every angle. There's a lot going on in it. I can find not a single flaw with this. And that's really, really big for me. I mean, the only thing to watch out for would just be the fragility of these sharp bits here. But besides that, no, nothing. This is a perfect piece. If you're a Predator fan or a horror movie fan, I think this is the one to get. You know, I'm gonna actually say it here. I'm gonna say get both, but if you can only choose one, Predator 2, I think, is the one to go for. So that's our look at Diamond Select's gallery diorama of the City Hunter Predator from Predator 2. If you guys want to pick this up for yourself, why not use our Amazon affiliate links in our description below, which helps support our website at no extra cost to you. And while you're at it, don't forget to give this video a like. And if you're new to the channel, please give us a sub to check out all the other statue, action figure reviews, and everything else we do here on the channel. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.